This movie is a story of how two British Canadians made the best of an English COVID lockdown situation to accomplish one of their carefully planned adventures. One thing that hasn't changed, however, is our sense of adventure and the fun of planning a big adventure. Both being computer trained, we love spreadsheets. Planning and preparation for our adventures is a major part of the fun. This year we decided to take a self-drive canal boat trip in a rented local boat around the canals of central France. Four weeks, 500 kilometers, and over 200 canal locks. Quite a challenge at the best of times. We are husband Don and wife Pat. We live in Kent, United Kingdom, and have been just as affected by the coronavirus this year as the whole world has been. Restricting our social lives and travel plans, and also changing many of our previous habits. This is not our first canal boat adventure. What started in the year 2000 with a week on the Canal du Nivernais in France, with Pat's family, progressed to more canal boat trips in Brittany, the Languedoc, the Lot, the Alsace, the Ardennes, and this central part of France on two previous trips. Over 20 years of exploration, each contributing to our understanding and enjoyment of this beautiful country. Presented with the need to keep virus safe, ourselves and those around us, but still wanting to travel, we decided that spending a month on a boat, just the two of us, was being as safe as we could possibly imagine. We planned to take all our food with us to avoid the need for restaurants and cafes, and to remain on board and isolated as much as possible throughout the voyage. Certainly we would have to forego some of the culture and French food we love, but exploring the countryside, discovering some new places, and revisiting some of our favorites would have to suffice. Day one, hour two, our first glass of wine, we're exhausted. Where to next? Our journey begins in Briere in August of 2020. Briere owes its prosperity to water transport. The main evidence of this is the vast stretch of water which was once a commercial port and is now the home of Locoboat Briere. The boat we chose was one we were very familiar with from previous trips, a Locoboat 1020 FB or Flying Bridge which provided us with plenty of space inside and outside steering positions, bow thrusters, a galley, and most important, a large lounge for inside meals and a patio for eating outside meals under an umbrella. So this is the inside steering position. And the sofa, mm -hmm. the eating table. That goes to the back and more food storage, our COVID masks. This is the back bedroom and we use it for storage, the two of us. And this is all of our food that we've stockpiled so that we don't have to go grocery shopping. And those are our clothes. And this is the, this is the back and then outside again the fridge Ooh, it's got a lousy freezer okay quite a bit of stuff but it's deep and it and it's wet all our plates mm -hmm. and the bedroom and the bedroom The circle route we have chosen is called the loop, or le boucle, in French, and we've decided to do this loop in a clockwise direction, beginning and ending in Briere. The first segment of our trip goes north from Briere. The Canal du Briere was the first summit level or watershed canal in Europe. It is 57 kilometers long and links the River Loire to the River Loan, for centuries a lifeline for Paris food and fuel being brought to the capital by barge from the upper Loire and other valleys. The weather couldn't be better, 
and after stowing all our belongings on board, we are ready to start off. Our first night is spent in Rogni Les Septiclus, or Rogni of the Seven Locks. Here we find evidence of the original canal, including the famous lock staircase of Seven Locks, which were built by Henry IV as part of a massive project to join the Mediterranean Sea to the English Channel by a network of canals and rivers. A project started in 1604. The locks were built to join the Loire to the Seine, and this is the route our journey takes us the next morning. There are over 200 locks on the circle route we are taking, some deep, over 5 meters, like this one at Mount Bowie. Pat got quite adept at exiting the narrow space without touching the sides despite the strong currents. Beside our overnight mooring at conflans sur levant runs the French section of the Eurovelo 3, the Pilgrim's bike route. The whole route runs 5,100 kilometers across Europe from Norway to Santiago de Compostela in Spain. This section is particularly beautiful and well maintained. After what becomes our regular departure time of 9 a.m., we move through the town of Montargis. Montargis is known as the Little Venice of the Gatinay because for centuries the surrounding rivers were used to create defensive moats. The scenic narrow waterways and bridges exist today. We start to get a hint of the big boys we will be seeing many more of. These barges come up the Seine from Paris and can go no farther due to the size of the locks. Today we navigate 14 kilometers of the mighty Seine, which flows from north of Dijon, through Paris, and onto the English Channel, past one of the biggest inland ports on the French waterways. One fully laden barge we pass is taking grain or cement downstream towards Paris. The lock on the Seine at Varennes is only 2.6 meters high, but life jackets are on because of the wide river. Tension is high. What you doing? Scared <laughs> shitless. A bloody big lock. Montero Faux Yon is a welcome sight. The Seine is behind us, and the Yon River, which flows into the Seine here, is ahead of us. Time for a drink to celebrate one week on the road. Still, the river here is wide and slow-moving. Commercial barges are to be expected, and they don't slow down for tourists. We will navigate the Yon River all the way to Auxerre. The countryside it flows through on this section meanders past countryside of low-lying river flats with locks making up a total difference in height of only 50 meters. Most of the locks in this section are equipped with sloping sides to prevent their walls caving in but they are a little tricky to get the hang of. Floating pontoons inside the lock are where you tie up and the pontoon floats upwards with the rise in the water level. The current can be quite strong when the sluices are opened. We take turns at the wheel on some of the longer stretches between locks, which can be four or five kilometers long, and it takes roughly eight minutes per kilometer. Try to keep it between the navigational beacons. But there aren't any. <laughs> the aqueduct of the van will be our mooring place for the night. This Roman aqueduct carries the waters of the river van 173 kilometers to Paris. 
Built in 1874, it has 162 arches of variable widths and a pipe of 2 meters in diameter. We don't tie up right under it. Just south of the city of Sens, we stop for lunch at Rosoy. The locks close from 12 to 1 in the afternoon, so the Ecclusier or lock keeper can have some lunch and so can we. Spaghetti carbonara avec sa main fumée. <laughs> Elle accuse numéro 10. Sauce. Mm. Mm -hmm. And mix it. Sit. Stir. Saint-Main Fumé de Carrefour. Voilà, c'est prêt. Bon appétit. To adjust our routine to the COVID-19 outbreak, we started planning our meals months in advance of the trip. Recipes were examined, ingredients chosen, grocery orders delivered, and boxes of all the necessary items were filled and checked. Joigny is a delightful city, if only we could visit more of it. We will have to imagine the maze of little winding streets and narrow alleyways, interlinked by numerous staircases and covered passageways that we will not explore this trip. The locoboat port is expecting us, and our gasol, or diesel, and propane get replenished by the helpful staff. We are set for the next section of our voyage. This is the town of Auxerre, and, in normal circumstances, we would be sitting at that café, eating our lunch, and drinking Chablis. However, as things are not normal, we will have a look at the rest of the town, which is really quite magnificent. There is the bits of the cathedral that you can see from here. A mooring, and this is the rest of the river. We've come past the bridge, and we've just come through that lock that is through the bridge, and there you have it. Voila. Good sauce. Good sauce. The Canal de Nivernay links the Loire Valley to the Seine Valley through an attractive wooded region called the Morvan. Along the way, we met some interesting characters. This fellow took an immediate liking to Don, but unfortunately lost interest when no snacks were forthcoming. One particularly nice overnight spot was Meilly La Ville. The weather is perfect. Not too hot or cold. Clear skies giving us wonderful sunrises and sunsets. 30 kilometers south of Auxerre, the Sossois Rocks, a 60 meter limestone wall of rocks, dominates the river Yon. This is a rock climber's mecca. The third segment of our four-week trip is shown in green. The Canal du Nivernay takes us up to the source of the canal's reservoir at the Etang de Bay, and then we cruise downstream to the River Loire, 
at the seas. Okay, so this is our new book. This is the second half of our trip. This is what we've done today in red. And we've stopped right there and that's where we're sitting at this moment. So tomorrow we start and we go off the page here and then we turn the page and we have lunch there at Puso, right mm -hmm. there where that mm -hmm. anchor is. Between 12 and 1 or 12 and 2 or whatever. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever time. And then we continue on down here past Clamsey. Mm -hmm. And this is the part that we've already done in previous trip. We've, we've come to here on a previous trip. Mm -hmm. So we know this part. Mm -hmm. And we know that we're going to stay at a nice place in villiers sur yon on the same page there. And that's why these paper clips are here to keep the page from flying in the wind. As we drive. As we drive. And mm -hmm. that's why it says September the 4th, Friday, which it will be when we stop right there at villiers sur yon At Pousseau, is a pont mobile, or swinging bridge. Don must disembark and operate the electric bridge himself. The pretty town of Clamsey also has a popular port with all one's requirements, but we prefer quieter spots. This isn't exactly what we have, but look where the propeller is, and look how big the rudder is how shallow the whole thing is. The last walk of the day as we arrive at villiers sur yon The gates are open so we can exit the lock and find our overnight anchorage. Next morning, leaving villiers sur yon Don navigates under one of the many low bridges along the route. Faites attention, or you will injure yourself or lose your umbrella overboard. Tying up securely to the shore is, of course, important. There are several techniques depending on whether there is a bollard, a ring, a cleat, or nothing but grass. Here, at a cleat, the rope is looped back onto the boat and tied there to make it easy to cast off. Attaching the boat to a bollard is also a challenge, but Don has practiced Yay. and does not need to go ashore to secure us. This is a very handy skill to have when there are only two of us on board. As we climb towards the summit of the Canal du Niverne, we come to the Sardi Lock Staircase, a flight of 16 locks. Some of the lock cottages, once abandoned, are now used by artists and craftsmen. Hello. Lock 14 is occupied by a potter, Robert Fuchs, and a special stop is made to add to our collection of his pottery. Here is one of the oldest locks we have seen, wooden and manual, and just like the English are still using. This is really our favorite part of the whole Nevernay, and the weather is perfect. One lock after another, the lock keepers are kept busy opening and filling the locks. They work as two well-organized teams and leapfrog each other by bicycle up the chain ahead of us. Most locks on the canals of central France are still manually operated and a lock keeper is present. We must stop well short until the gates are opened, then go slowly in and moor with the rope on a bollard to hold the boat against the side. Helping the lock keeper is always appreciated.
At the top of the lock chain are three tunnels. Our one-way passage through them is regulated by a traffic light at the start of the approach. We had to wait almost an hour here for little electric boats coming towards us, but it was a lovely day. At least you can see the end of the tunnel while you are trying not to bounce back and forth off the narrow sidewalls. We emerge at the Atang de Bay, the huge reservoir that feeds water to the canal in both directions. Nachos in my new bowl and a glass of wine. After passing the summit of the canal at bay, we descend towards the River Loire at the seas. Going downstream is much easier as the lock is full when you enter and it is easy to lasso the bollard. As the lock empties, there is very little current. This is a triple lock. And then you can see ahead of us a double. So from here you can actually see five. We're in the first one. Just ahead there, where I'm just about to go under the bridge here, is the second one. Below that is the third, and then there's a pond. And then there's two more after that. Day follows a lovely day, cruising along at eight kilometers an hour. The guidebook warns when going into the little port of Panso to be careful to stay on the correct side of the buoys otherwise you will go aground. We managed to stay high and dry. What's today, Don? I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe Thursday. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're at an absolutely gorgeous harbor called Pensot. Or something like that. Penso. 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 It's beautiful, super weather. And today we are going to Cersei La Tour. We were just getting ready to cast off, but the diesel engine wouldn't start. Long story short, the technician had to come from Briere and install a new starter motor. In the late afternoon, we got underway. Très joli, hein? Yeah, what's your name? <laughs> Just in time for another little adventure when an umbrella wrapped itself around the propeller. Found this on the prop today. Do -do 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 -do. Noticed a little bit of vibration. Couldn't steer. Le Canalus and this <gasps> and this <gasps> and this You're like a conjurer and this No and this <gasps> and this and a little bit more We finally managed to get back underway and got to our mooring near Circe La Tour just after 7 p.m. and start fresh the next morning without incident. To arrive at the Port of Seas, we must navigate a two-kilometer section of the Laura River. As our loop tour is so long and the locoboat port of Corbigny was closed due to the pandemic, we had arranged to refuel at Seas and stay overnight there. In 1838, the canal lateral à la Loire was completed to replace the use of the river. The river Loire, an ancient transport route, is very unreliable during winter floods and summer droughts. This is the fourth and last segment of our journey on our way back to the starting point in Briere. How's it going, babe? Pretty damn good. <laughs> see what's coming up. We are
approaching Nevers. It's about 10 in the morning. Cool. It's going to be 31 today. Life is good. We prefer boxed wine on board. The quality is good and it is much easier to handle. Just past Nevers, the first of two aqueducts we cross is Le Gutin, over the river Allier, the largest tributary of the Loire. The canal descends almost 10 meters from the aqueduct using two large locks. The Eclusier, or lock keeper, has to be particularly careful on this tricky lock. Farther on, we stop for the night at a familiar port, Marseille-les-Aubigny, first visited in the year 2000 with Pat's family. It hasn't changed. This is Eri. We're stopping here for the night. That's the lock that you can see. A few fishermen and some of the village. What are you looking at? Oh, our next adventure, we're planning it already. We haven't even finished this one. <laughs> A warm, shady afternoon is spent relaxing on the after deck. Updating I'm our... updating our spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Because for 28 days, if we hadn't planned down to the kilometer, the PK, and the number of locks, we wouldn't have any idea whether we were on schedule or not. So we had to go by every single lock and every single kilometer of cruising to figure out that's what the spreadsheet's all about. But then that was a plan before we even arrived. Then we wanted to know how the actual, how the actuals worked out and what we did different from the plan, if anything. And we did change quite a few things in the plan. And the more we, closer to the end we got, the more changes that we actually made. So what I'm doing now is, in this comments section, I'm recording when we started on which day and when we ended, and when we started and when we ended, when we started and when we ended, etc. So that when we go back home, we can update the spreadsheet with the plan versus the actual, and we can then decide whether we need to, in the future to make different plans or not. Having lived in the little town of Vinon, near here, in 2003, we knew Sancerre, but this time we decided to play it safe and miss exploring our familiar places. With so much technology in use these days, organizing our recharging requirements was a significant task. The boat generates 12 volt power when the diesel engine is running, so iPhones, auxiliary batteries, and iPads are plugged in during the day. Overnight, when shore power is available, all the devices can be plugged in. Lots of cables and plug converters are needed. The canal bridge at Briere is justifiably famous. Built in the 1890s, it is 662 meters long and crosses above the Loire River a one-way crossing over which we have priority as we are going downstream. One final stretch of peaceful canal before returning through the narrow opening to our mooring at Locoboat Briere. Here we are in the port, the Locoboat port at Briere. 
I just arrived after four months of cruising, and we are going to stay overnight here and then drive home tomorrow morning. Here's our boat. Totally unscathed. <laughs> as we are. This is a fitting place to celebrate our 46th wedding anniversary and the end of a wonderful journey around La Boucle, France's finest canal circuit. Where will our next journey take us?